This is Jewel Diamond Taylor with a very important message that may apply to you or someone that you know. It's about domestic violence, a very politically correct term for someone being violently hurt or even killed. Domestic violence is just far too common. It does not discriminate. It crosses all ethnic, social, and economic levels. It happens in six-figure homes and low-income homes. It happens to your neighbor, your church member, your co-worker, or even in your family, unfortunately. It happens to professionals, college students, the mentally ill, marriage partners, and the elderly. Recognizing the warning signs of abuse is the first step, but you know, taking action is the most important step in breaking free or in helping someone that you know is experiencing violence. Feeling uncomfortable or being afraid in your relationship is the number one red flag that your relationship is not healthy. Estimates are that one out of four women will experience an abusive relationship. That's too many. And they're often early detectable warning signs. Domestic violence is about power and control. Let's be clear about that. That's what it's really about. It's not about you being unworthy or ugly or stupid. It's about your person that is violating you. They are experiencing issues with power and control. Controlling behaviors often are the first indicators. Anytime someone asks or demands you to change who you are, change your appearance or behavior, compromise your relationship, uh, they're giving you warning signs that your relationship may take a turn towards abusiveness. Signs of domestic violence are often, unfortunately, overlooked, denied, or excused. The truth is that there is never, never, never an excuse. Love should not hurt. And the only way to end domestic violence is to be aware. So I'm grateful I have this time to discuss with you some of the symptoms and some solutions. Let me share with you seven common types of abuse because I find most people think that domestic abuse is just about hitting and violence and unfortunately the kind of abuse that ends up with the victim dying. We hear about this too much sadly in the news and we become immune to it but it's happening far too often. The seven types of abuse I want to focus on are physical abuse, the shoving, the slapping, the hitting, the biting, denying someone medical care or forcing alcohol or drug abuse. And then there's sexual abuse, coercing and attempting you to coerce in sexual contact without consent. Economic abuse. Yeah, did you think about that? Making or attempting to make a person financially dependent keeping controls on the purse, maintaining total control over all the financial resources, withholding access to the money, forbidding attendance at school or employment because that affects your financial status. Emotional abuse. That's something that I know about. When you've been intimidated, called out of your name, uh, hollered, uh, intimidated, the abuser uses uh, their voice, or intimidation or criticism to belittle you or to damage your self-esteem or even your relationship with your children or your family and friends. Then there's psychological abuse, causing fear and threatening harm um, to you, your family, your children, destroying your pets or your property, playing those mind games to make you doubt your sanity and forcing isolation from family, friends, school or work. This is very common. This is psychological when they will not allow you to interact with your family and friends or job or go to church. Then there's sexual coercion and reproductive control. When a partner sabotages your birth control, did you realize that? that that's a form of abuse. And then there's elder abuse. That's the last one. Elder abuse is neglecting a family member that is elderly, they take control of their finances, they abuse them physically. And do you know it mostly happens when there are adult children or other family members such as grandchildren or spouses or partners um, misusing the elder person's personal checks, credit cards, or accounts. And then of course there are salespeople that 
uh, create financial scams on the elder abuse. Let me ask you some questions so that you can recognize if you are seeing some symptoms in your relationship or those around you. Um, when the partner expects you to spend all of their time and check in with them constantly. I've seen this far too often. The phone constantly rings all day long. Where are you? What are you doing? You're lying. That's a form of abuse. They act extremely jealous or possessive of you. That is not love. That's not romantic when you think a person is uh, always wants to have you around them all the time. We get that twisted. We think that's love and that's being possessive. Uh, when they isolate you, when they treat you with disrespect and put you down, put you down in front of your friends and your family, puts down your dreams, your ideas, and your goals, that's abuse. If someone loses temper frequently over little things, when they make you feel as if you're walking on eggshells just to keep peace in the home, when they make threats to hurt you, leave you, hurt your pets, destroy your property, or even commit suicide if you don't do what they want, that's abuse. Um, when they refuse to take responsibility for their own actions and they blame you, or they blame their boss, or they blame their parents for their problems. Um, does someone threaten to hurt you or hurt your children? Does it seem like you've been ignored for hours and for days? Do they insist on having sex even if you don't want to? Do they embarrass you in front of your family and friends? I find in counseling as a life coach for women, I want to speak to the women right now, because yes, men do experience abuse, but I want to talk to the women right now in my sisterhood. Many women are smart on their jobs in college, operating their businesses, juggling schedules, taking care of the children, taking care of aging parents, going to class, um, making their hair appointments and going to fitness. But these same women I find sometimes secretly mourn because they have given away their love. They've denied love, they shared love, they tried to buy love, they've been betrayed by love, and they've been hurt by love. And love should not hurt. Many were on a one-way street of love. Many ignored the flashing red and yellow lights. And many put their life on hold for years, living with false hopes on holidays and weekends. They were obsessed and depressed by love, what they thought was love. And they'll tell you how that bad boy risky behavior put their life in danger. They will tell you how they sacrificed for their man in prison in a long distance relationship. The one who promised he would get it together or he convinced her he was leaving his wife. They will tell you how they were caught by surprise when the romance stopped and the mistreatment started. And I find that some will tell me they chose to live in denial instead of living with truth. They told me how they stayed in a loveless or abusive relationship. They told me how they were martyrs for their children or afraid of being alone. So they put their heart on the for sale rack or even on the clearance rack rather than be alone. They will tell you that they put their man on a pedestal and idolized him forsaking God, family, and priorities for her own self-preservation and peace of mind. I've been told that they took financial hits, emotional hits, physical hits from his hand instead of being cherished by his heart. That I've been told how they've been even betrayed themselves by diminishing and dishonoring her own desires, her own worth, her own goals, her own virtue, her own time, her own body, heart, and soul. I've been told how they've suffered in silence as their crown of worthiness fell to the floor. I've been told that they were not smart with their heart. And that's why I wrote the book, Love Smart With Your Heart, because desperation is a terrible perfume to wear. I remember the song by Dinah Ross, A Sweet Hangover. And when someone has a love hangover, their heart and hormones are telling them one thing and their mind and spirit is telling them something else. I have found that women have experienced rage and rejection and it makes them feel homicidal, sad, broken in their spirit and even suicidal. They don't even call or ask for help because their worthiness has been so crushed. They have felt a tug of war between their emotions and their good common sense, between what they should do and what they want to do. 
They have felt lonely, angry, vulnerable, and mad at themselves for ignoring the red lights and flags that waved, warning them to stay away from Mr. Bad News, to stay away from Mr. Isolation or Mr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, from Mr. Jealousy, from Mr. Controlling Behavior, from Mr. Breaking Things and Mr. Outbursts of Blaming Others, and Mr. Hypersensitive who feels everyone is attacking him. You, my dear, were created by God's love, for love, to love, and to be loved. And many women, unfortunately, I find, do suffer from self-betrayal. They deny their own desires. They mark mortgage their souls. They search in secret for peace. They settle for less and play down their desires and strengths. <clears throat> They've been... Um, careless and they stumble into addictions, affairs, accidents, anger, depression, sickness, apathy, and abusive relationships. And as the self-esteem doctor, I have been witnessing far too often women who lack self-esteem, courage, and boundaries and tolerate disrespect from selfish children, from family members, mates, spouses, dates, and friends. And I find that women too often bury their feelings with fake smiles. They put their dreams on layaway and they silence their screams. And self-betrayal is not the way to love smart with your heart. I find that some women crave love, resist love, have never known real love. They confuse lust with love or they love too hard or they're afraid to be loved. They don't know how to love. They've been hurt by love. They're starving for love. Or they're nurturing others with their love. Or they obsess and smother others with their love. Or they close their hearts to love because they've been so hurt. Or they love with conditions. Or they think they can buy love with sex, money, or their looks. Some women have even been rejected and become self-destructive and self-loathing. Listen, my dear, love should not hurt. Do not tolerate physical, emotional, or financial abuse. Honor and take good care of yourself to avoid feeling resentful, desperate, and empty. Feed your mind, body, and spirit with healthy and worthy thoughts.